All right, Mike, let's get to the games that uh, kick off here in just the next few days. Uh, Steve Adazio took over a uh, lower-rung program in the ACC of Boston College. Immediately, they got them to a couple bowl games. Then they bottomed out with uh, a winless ACC. And it's just a program that's not going to win every year. He's got to catch it in cycles. He's got to recruit. He's got to persevere through some down times. And that's what happened last year. So, Good for Boston College to rally, get to the six-win mark, and then face a Maryland team that's very similar. Can't compete anywhere close to the likes of the teams that they have to face in their division, so they have to win the games that they have to win, and they were able to do that out of conference, two and six in the Big Ten, but they swept uh, the likes of a lot of lesser teams out of conference. So we got Maryland at six and six taking on B.C., uh, six and six, maybe not with quite the dominant defense that they've had in recent years, but still very, very stout on that side of the ball. Yeah, it's really hard to get a gauge on this game, really, because you look at Boston College and like you said, their defense might not be as good as it's been in years past, but still a really solid unit. Offensively, look, Steve Adazio, it's really interesting. People forget he was the offensive coordinator at the University of Florida with Tim Tebow and they're winning all the national championships and looking like one of the best teams in college football on the offensive side of the ball. And now he takes you know, takes the reins at Boston College a few years back, and they've been nothing but bad offenses there since then. It's been really interesting to watch that develop. They obviously hire Scott Leffler from Virginia Tech. We can't necessarily say that that's worked out. Um, Offensively, Boston College hasn't been much better this year. They got a quarterback that can at least throw the football, which is, you know, for Boston College, you know, watching them the last few years, it's it's an upgrade, believe it or not. Patrick Tolles, 1,500 yards passing, 10 touchdowns, 6 interception, kind of a mixed bag there as far as the touchdown interception ratio is concerned. But when Boston College takes care of the football and plays a ball control type of offense, they have a good enough, um, good enough stable running backs led by John Hilleman to at least advance the ball a little bit. And if they keep the ball away from you long enough, the defense creates a turnover or two on a short field. Boston College can score enough points to beat you, and that's what they did to get to 6-6. Six and six. When you look at Maryland, to your point, I mean, they're a team that – Obviously, in the in the Big Ten is extremely overmatched at this point. But DJ Durkin's done a great job there in year one there um, at, at Maryland to really turn the program around. They really hit a downtime right after Ralph Region was fired there um, years back, and then you know they brought Randy Edsel in, and they had really struggled since then. But bringing in a guy like Durkin to to lead the charge there for Maryland. Um, they've been able to bounce back nicely, make a bowl game this year, obviously. They won the games that they were supposed to win, like you said, and the same can be said for Boston College. It's the reason why both of these teams are bowl eligible. As far as a pick for this game, look, I love Boston College's defense, but I think Maryland's offense is going to score enough points to win this football game. I'm not sure the same can be said about Boston College's offense against Maryland. I think these two teams are extremely similar on both sides of the football. I think they play good enough defense and and lackluster offense. But I think at the end of the day, Maryland's going to be able to score enough points. They got enough in the stable of running backs there led um, by their kid Johnson, 845 yards, four touchdowns on the year. Is their leading rusher, DJ Moore, is a guy um, that they really like to throw to a ton, 597 yards and six touchdowns on the outside. I like Maryland. I think they have too many weapons for Boston College, and that can't be said for a lot of teams that Maryland plays against, but I think it'll be the case here in the quick lane bowl, and because of that, I like Maryland to win. Really, a game that should be a toss-up. Yeah, Mike, you're not kidding when you talk about 51% passing at Boston College being a definite upgrade. That's how bad it was before Patrick Tolles. He's throwing for 51%, but that's an upgrade. Uh, Same situation at Maryland when you look at uh, Perry Hill's He was a 50% passer who threw five more interceptions and touchdowns last year. This year, 10 TDs, three picks, 66%. So not jaw-dropping, but much better uh, for a 3-9 and team in 2015 in Maryland that's now a 6-6 and team that beat Michigan State. Don't know how that happened, but we know Michigan State was way down this year uh, and lost by a score to Indiana, respectable team, and again, improved from three wins uh, to six this year. And of course, this is an old ACC matchup. These schools have met 11 times with BC leading the series eight to three. 